out to Ronnie Hawkins farm near Peterborough where he was rehearsing his new band since then he's been on the road playing all kinds of out-of-the-way clubs and doing some recording and now his new album is just about to be released it's called legend in his spare time and he launched it in his own inimitable style with a stagecoach ride through downtown Toronto I rode in on a greyhound I'll be walking out if I go I was just passing through, must have been seven months or more. Ran out of time and money, it looks like they took my friend. Oh Lord, I'm stuck in Lodi again. The day was topped off with a party at Ontario Place, where he did a concert for 10,000 people the following night. we were doing it because what we were trying to do was copy the old black cats you know because we were the rebels and all my home area and all around memphis it was either stone country or pop music you know there wasn't any really rhythm and blues like it is today wasn't i don't think there was even any charts back then you know and there weren't any black stations but we liked that music you know and so we couldn't even buy the records you had to drive clear to Memphis to get the old 78s of Muddy Waters and John Lee Hooker and Howlin' Wolf and Memphis Slim and all those cats that I like, you know. And we tried to copy some of their songs. Was there a lot of social pressure on you kids at the time playing the black man's music? We were treated like we were two pay grades below a prisoner of war everywhere except the kids our age. They started liking it, but we were 
barred from high schools. We were barred from playing anywhere because it was like putting, the, like you said, putting the devil in the kids that were going crazy. They were jumping and dancing and doing things that was unnatural, you know, <laughs> for back then. So what about now? You still pride yourself in putting the devil back into people? Well, well now, now I think some of them kids are putting a little devil back into me. <laughs> One of the great musicians that inspired Ronnie and taught him a lot back in the old days down south was the legendary Bo Diddley, who over the years has become a close friend. Here he is featured in Phil Spector's TNT show, which was produced in the early 60s. Hey, played all them old shows together and you wouldn't believe some of the places and some of the things that happened you know this is back now before black was beautiful right that's before, right before they really had equal rights that's and there right. were some weird things going on that's, that's right. when the bus pulled up and the road manager had to go around at the back of the restaurant to that's get right. to get the little uh, things and bring them on the bus because he couldn't eat on the bus and i was the only white cat on the bus right <laughs> i could go in the restaurant but i couldn't take Bo and jimmy reed with me what did you that's think of him back then did you think he was a weirdo or something hanging out with you guys no no, uh -uh. I love their music. No, but see, because here's what we couldn't understand. See, in show business, we didn't have no color lines. You know, it's just music. That, that was music. Music was music. There wasn't no color barrier. And we used to go in places, and cats from New York and Chicago and all them places like that, they didn't believe what was going on down south. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they just could not believe it. But, you know, I don't hold it against the people in the South because that's the way they were brought up. They were raised that that's way right. and they didn't know no better. See, they say that somebody had to be on the bottom. So the black cat happened to be the dude that was on the bottom. You know what I'm saying? The genie was rough back then, to tell you the truth. And and you see it wasn't easy. We didn't have no color lines. We got on the stage and we and, and we helped one another. You know, but yeah, but when we got back to town, 
he had to get off the bus and run like hell to his side of town <laughs> and, and leave us over there, you know what I'm saying? I don't care how bad he wanted to stay over there with us, but not be caught over there. We had different with restaurants and different hotels. We couldn't stay together. It was bad. Jeannie wants to say, Jeannie, if I don't hit the big time in the next 25 or 30 years, I'm going to pack it in. 